You don't see me this way here and then see me. If you come to my house, you will see I'm doing the same thing. I bleed Jesus. I bleed the word of God. You know, and I, you know, it's not about you're so holy or you're so righteous because I'm an imperfect woman. I mess up. I blow it. But I understand that when I mess up, saints, and I blow it, that I have sense enough to come back to God to get it right. See, you got to understand that Satan doesn't have that privilege to make me feel that once I mess up, if I blow it, that God has abandoned me. God has not abandoned you no matter what you've done before you got here, no matter what you did in the booth, in the back, in the corner, in the dark, God has not abandoned you. Where are you going to go? I mean, where are you going to go away from the presence of God? He is ever present with you. And that's what I want to bring to you. And I thank God for my brother, Pastor Barrett, whom I love dearly. I just thank God for him, his family. And God is awesome. My job today is to make the scripture come alive to you. Today, I just want to talk about God is ever present. Amen? Amen. I want to help you see God clearer. I want to make it so simple that even my grandson sitting over there, stand up, King. Yeah, show my grandson some love. He spent the night with me because he wanted to come to church this morning. <laughs> God is ever present. And these are, let me, let me tell you how awesome he is. You know, the Bible says in Genesis 2 and 7, the Bible, y'all know the story. The Bible says that God took man and he blew his breath in the nostril of man and man became a living being. He became a living being. Everybody inhale. Exhale. Do it again. Inhale. Exhale. If you ever wondered if God was in your life, you just saw. He blew his breath into you. So when you inhale, you're bringing him in. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You're bringing him in. And then he tells us in Psalms 150 what to do with that breath. When he gives us, he blew his breath. Then he tells us in 150, Psalm 150, what to do with that breath. He said, let everything that have do what? Now he gave you breath. Then he told you what to do with the breath. Are y'all ain't hearing me this morning? God is ever present. A lot of times I sit back and I think, and I'm going to get to the scripture in just a minute because we're not going to be long. We want God. I want, you to, I want you to feel the love of God this morning. The Bible says in the book of John, and I think about this all the time, John 3. And look, I sit back. If you want to know that God is present, what about the wind? What about when the wind blows? Let me ask you a question. Where does it come from, my brother? Where does the wind come from? I mean, can you see it when it shows up? You just feel it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Where does the wind come from? Are you hearing what the, say, what the Lord is saying? John 3 and 8 says, The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear the sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. I'm telling you today, beloved, that God is ever present. Listen to me. God is with you right now. How you know, Kathy? Because I just told you to inhale. You just breathe the breath of life. of God. Well, can I say it again? One of the greatest tactics that Satan will use is to make you think that God has left you because you're going through problems. Show me someone in this room. I ain't saying the world because I, I know the answer. But who in this room is without problems? Who in this room is without struggle? Who in this room 
is without heartache and pain. Who in this room have children that you're worried about? Who in this room have grandchildren that you're concerned about? Who in this room have to pay your bills? Who in this room, come on somebody, who in this room is exempted from any of that? The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Now many is a lot. There are 70,000 thoughts that go, let me help you, that go through your mind in a day. Not seven, not 70, not 700, not 7,000, but 70 thoughts, 70,000, 70,000, 70,000, 70,000 thoughts go through your mind all day long. That means the mind is never slowing down. Are y'all ain't with me this morning? That means the mind is constantly traveling. Do your research. That means the mind is constantly moving. That's why people are battling anxiety. My daughter battles really bad with that. Anxiety because you're constantly thinking that Satan have you thinking that the thoughts that you're thinking are real. And the thoughts that you're thinking are not real. It's what God says that matters. It's what real. And so just like Satan came in and he spoke to Eve and he told her about the fruit, he's, doing, he's still doing the same thing. There's nothing new about his tactics, but there's got to come a time where we mature. There's got to come a time where we say, okay, this is it. I, this is it. This is all going to stop right now. If you have 70,000 thoughts going through your mind in a day, that means the mind is constantly moving. What are you doing to combat that? Every thought that's going through your mind ain't good. Every thought that's going through your mind ain't holy. Everything that's going, every thought that's traveling through your mind is not evil either. But it's constantly moving. What are you doing? And that's why we have so much pastors, so much mental illness because we're confusing all of these thoughts and thinking that it's going to happen. We're constantly walking like this and looking over our shoulder. But Isaiah 26 and 3 said, I'm going to keep you in perfect peace whose mind, what? Is, but your mind has to stay on God. But can I tell you, now look at me, look at me. I'm talking to myself, now look at me. You just told me I have 70,000 thoughts that go through my mind in a day. How in the world I'm going to be able to do what Isaiah 26 and 3 says? Keep my mind on it. That's why you got to get in the Word. Can I help somebody in here today? You see, I can spend five minutes with you and listen to what comes out of your mouth and I already see where you are and where you're going. Where your passion is, is where you're going to spend your time your money? Are y'all hear what I'm saying? You're going to give your attention to? You're going to give your heart to? Whatever your passion is. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? If you can't pull away from the things that are holding you bound that are not godly, you're going to have a struggle on your hands. Why contribute to the faults and the problems you're going to already have by adding to them? Listen to me. Life is a process. And God allows afflictions, my brother. He allows trials. He allows hurt. He allows pain. He allows death. He allows tears. He allows all of that to happen in your life so that it will work together for the good. Everything works together for good. You take cake. Y'all know that. You got cake. You making a chocolate cake. Flour ain't sweet. Baking soda ain't sweet. Come on. The salt ain't sweet. The Dutch chocolate ain't sweet. But you put the sugar in it. One thing, one ingredient that's sweet with all that bitter. And you whip it up and you put it in a pan, put it in an oven, and a cake comes out. All of those things make the cake good. All of the evil, all of the hurt, all of the... Well, let me just deal with me. All of that foolish stuff I did in my lifetime, all the mistakes I purposely made, 
all the sin I purposely committed. I'm talking about Kathy. I can talk about me. All the ugly stuff I purposely did. God was right there with me. He said she's going to come around. But you better hurry up, Kathy. He won't let you tarry long, but he'll allow you an opportunity if that's what you want. But you see, tomorrow's not promised to you. The very next second is not promised to you. So don't stay where you are if there is no growth. But you see, all of that stuff that I've been through is why I'm able to stand behind this pulpit today. It brought me from where I was right here to the front. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I've done some things. This woman who loves God, this woman who prays God, this woman who just thinks the world of him, who goes to bed and look up in the ceiling loves him. Why? Because I did enough hell in my life to make me see clearly that God is where I need to be. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. I'm just moving. I'm just jumping because I'm, I feel compelled the spirit to tell you this. Are you listening to what the Lord is saying? God is ever present. He's with you right now, sitting in that chair. He's standing up here in this pulpit, talking to you. He's everywhere. He was speaking and singing to you this morning. God is faithful. I'm not perfect, but I love God. And I just told you, whatever you spend your time, I'm not talking about your job. I'm talking about the thing that you're passionate about, your leisure time, when you're not at work and when you have that free time. You see, I'm where I am in the spirit realm because I've invested in that. I decided to tell the devil, no. You think I don't want to sit down and watch certain movies? But I wanted more of God. You think I didn't want to go to the club? But I wanted more of God. You think I didn't want to go over there and do this and that and that and that? But I wanted more of God. And the more of God that I received, the clearer he became to me. And then he said, Kathy, I want you to be my mouthpiece. I know I'm not perfect. And don't anybody in here think I am. Because I'm not. But what I am is a woman who loves God. A woman who has the heart of God. But a woman who makes mistakes. Listen to me. Let me tell you what happened. Today is, um, what's today? Sunday. So today is Sunday. Let me just show you one of my imperfections so you'll know. But I'm going to also show you the power of God. I was at the store Thursday and I went shopping for uh, my daughter. Um, and I wanted to surprise her with some outfits. So I, while I was in the store, uh, I sat back and it was at the end of the day. I didn't know that was a problem. Mm. So what happened, the, um, the, the person behind the counter who was ringing me up, I had about, I don't know, 40 items. I had a lot of stuff. So I'm about to give you a lot of money. Uh -huh. So while I'm standing there, behind, you know, waiting to be, she, I walk up, and instead of her saying, oh, okay, well, we about to sell a lot of merchandise, she told me, look, can I get the people behind you because this gonna be long. You got all this stuff. And I had on this mask, you know, and I'm like, okay. So the woman, you know, came up, and uh, so the other person was taking the sensors off of the items. And while I was standing there, I said, okay. Then when she fit, that lady had quite a few purchases. Then here comes another woman. She said, can y'all come on up here? And so at this point, your sister girl right here said, first I gave her the stare. Y'all know the death stare? I gave her the death stare. I looked at her and I said, with my eyes first. Because sometimes your presence is just enough. Yes. I gave her the death stare. And she looked at me and she called me a name with her eyes. And so I sat there and I said, okay. And then I said, let me say this to you, ma'am. I said, am I not a valued customer to you? Am I not, 
I'm saying I'm spending my money just like all these people that you're pulling ahead of me. I said, you are checking them out. I said, you're checking them out. Now you're making me wait. But I was here before them. She stepped back and she just let me have it. And she told me, let me tell you how I see this. You got all of this stuff and the sisters got to be off. And I figured while we're doing that, I could be ringing all these people up. But those people clothes have sensors on them too. So, so I sat back and I said, are you the manager? Yes, yeah, I'm the manager. I said, okay. And then the, the earth became silent and I got quiet. And I said, okay. Finished my purchase. Walked to the door. I told her, thank you. She slammed my stuff on there. And I went home. But the Lord convicted me. <laughs> so what I did was, watch this. I'm telling you, I'm sensitive in the spirit. Very, 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 very sensitive to the voice of God. And, and he, he can, I love him so much and I, he, he is authorized. He has permission to do whatever he wants to do in my life. So about two or three o'clock in the morning while I was asleep, you know, he woke me up. And he brought that young lady before me again. And when he brought her before me, he said, I want you to go back and I want you to bless her. I said, okay. Gave it a, didn't even give it a second thought. Because it's, you know, not my life. You know, it, my life is God. So I get up yesterday morning, go buy all of this stuff, then bought the right card. It was like God had the perfect gift bag. He had the perfect card. Then I put some money in it along with the gift. And I walk up back into that store and I, you know, asked for her and the lady said, well, she's not here. I said, well, listen, I, I have to give her this. And she said, well, in short version, she emailed the text the girl, the manager, the manager, which she was the assistant manager. She texted the assistant manager and then the lady gave me the assistant manager's number. I said, well, did she authorize you to give me her number? She said, no, but just take it. So I went and I texted her and I told her who I was. And short version, listen to me. Let me. Oh yeah, That's why I love God so much. Obedience. This woman, when she, you know, I left the gift. She went to pick it up and she called me because I put my uh, phone number in there. And she called me and this is what the woman said to me. I didn't know who you were. She, she didn't know who I was as a person. But this is what she said to me. She said, when I saw the gift that you gave me, she said, I immediately went on Facebook and looked you up. And I saw all of this, all of these inspirational, motivational things, your speeches, your messages. I saw all of that. And she said, God, is this the woman that you're sending to help me? She said, ma'am, she said, I am in one of the darkest places of my life. I don't know how I'm going to make it, but I'm in one of the darkest places of my life. Y'all ain't hearing me. And when she said that to me, I said, how can I help you? She said, I need to talk to you. She said, ma'am, I could have communicated better to you. She said, but this dark place that I'm in, and I understand darkness. And then she said, I said, I'll tell you what. I said, which is going to be today. I said, today, well, I said, tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Call me. I'm gonna give you my time. I said, and let's turn the light on. She said, and she began to thank me and thank me. And she sat back and she said, I cannot believe this. This is what I'm telling you. All things work together for good. Even that bad attitude, that bad situation, is bringing now light to her life. Y'all ain't hear me. Those people that you're arguing with. Let me let me tell you. I'm hurrying to a close, but I've got to share this with you. Those people that you're, you're falling out with, those people that's on your nerves, look what 2 Timothy 2 and 25. When I read this, I was like, thank you, Jesus. But 2 Timothy 2 and 25 and verse 26, and I'm going to paraphrase it for you, but this is what it says. The Lord is saying that, look, you can't be argumentative. You can't be on the level of people who's trying to bring you down to their level. Listen to me. People are going to be people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And if it's one thing I know, I know people. 
So here we are. I'm standing back and I'm reading this. And this is what it says. And he talks about how the importance of not arguing, watch this, and show love. Watch this. Why? Because the Lord said this. He said, if you show love, he said in the 26th verse, he said, then he said, I can open up and I can cause the power of Satan to be broken. Look what he said. I can cause the power of Satan to be broken because Satan is using people when you hold them hostage to run his errands. Did you know that? Did you know that your attitude, if it's wrong, you holding people hostage? I could have ate that woman up. I could have ripped her. But that's not what I was called to do. What I was called to do was do what I did. Are you hearing what the Lord is saying? God knows there are people who rub you the wrong way. God knows there are people that get under your skin. God knows there are people that you, when they walk in a room, you just want to die and disappear out of their presence. Why? Because of that spirit that's in them. Am I right about it? Because of that spirit that's in them. And what God is saying to us, he says, don't allow it to hold you hostage. Because Satan has them hostage to make them run errands. Y'all ain't hear me? I, I, I can talk about cat. I can talk about cat. And I talk openly about this. But my son, I have two children, a son and a daughter. My son, boy, the devil wants him. I, I said the devil wants him. It's like when, when the Lord told Peter, he said, Satan wants to sift you as we, he wants it. And so I'm constantly fighting my brother. I'm constantly fighting for my son. I'm constantly on my knees for my son. I'm constantly crying out to God for my son. And I'm telling the devil, you can't have him. The devil said, but I want him. I said, but you can't have him. The devil said, but I want him. And I said, but he's covered in the blood. The devil said, well, I better back up. I'm constantly praying for my son. I'm constantly crying out for my son. Y'all hear me? And I'm not ignorant. The Bible says don't be ignorant to Satan's devices. I'm hurting to a close. Because I understand. Watch this. God doesn't play both sides of the fence. God controls both sides of the fence. I said he doesn't play both sides of the fence. He controls both sides of the fence. Isn't that an awesome God? He's ever present. He knows how much to let get, he knows how much to let the fire burn. And then he knows when to put it down. He knows when to calm the fire. Are you hearing what the Lord is saying? I said before, Satan, you know what he is? A Rottweiler on a chain. Y'all know what a Rottweiler is? One of them big vicious dogs. But he has a chain around his neck. And so what happens is, the devil has a chain around his neck, but God is holding the chain. And so God, if you're in sin, come on somebody, are you doing something you ain't got no business doing? Are you doing something that you need to correct? Are you doing something that you need to fix? God has the chain, but he'll let the dog get close to you. He'll let him get close to you. Why? So you can go, ah! And turn around from your wicked way. See, he'll let him get close to you. That's what Satan is for. But you got to understand that he is causing you to think things that are not real. He's trying to make you think that God is not who he said he is. He's trying to make you think that God can't do what he said he's going to do. In the back, say, I hear you, Kathy. All right, he wants you to think that he's not going to do what he said he's going to do. The Bible says in Genesis that Satan, the Bible calls him a serpent when he came against Adam and Eve. He was a serpent. But in Revelation, the Bible says that he was a dragon. How did he go from a serpent to a dragon? Because we believe what
what he was saying. We made him be. We caused Satan to become a drag. And what God is telling us is to put him back on the ground. Because when you put Satan on the ground, he's no longer this big, big being. Come on, somebody. He's no longer this big creature. Y'all ain't hear me. That we thought in our mind to fabricate, to think that he's going to destroy us. God said, put him back on the ground. Because it's when he's on the ground that you can crush his head. Are you hear what the Lord is saying? Put him back on the ground. In your mind, those 70,000 thoughts, you've made Satan big. I've done it too. But the word reminds me, either you're going to believe what you read or not. You're going to believe what God says or not. And if God says in Luke 10, 18, 19, 20, 21, he says, behold, I give you power. Either you're going to believe that or not. To tread on serpents, yeah. over scorpions, yeah. and over all the power of the enemy. Yeah. And he said, nothing. Not Listen, he said, nothing yeah. shall by any means harm you. Yeah. But now look, he said, don't get excited because demons have to do what you say do. Yeah. Then if you do that, then you're making Satan big. If you cast out a devil, you're back to making Satan big. If you cast out devils and heal them, you're making Satan big. Those things are supposed to happen. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Are you hearing what the Lord is saying? And so with that in mind, we get to this place in our life where we understand that the Lord said, don't rejoice because demons obey you. He said, rejoice that your name is written in the land of the And we're wrapping it up right here. Look at this. Look at this. The Bible says in Matthew, y'all know the story. I thought this was powerful. I just thought this was amazing. The Bible said, and I read it many times, but he gave me a new revelation. The Bible in Matthew talked about when uh, the disciples got on the ship. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And Jesus was walking on the water. Watch this. See, many of you in here, listen to me, many of you in here are called to do great and mighty things. Some of you know what you're called to do, and some of you don't know what you're called to do. But I can tell you that you're called to do something. And so watch this. So when Peter sees Jesus and he gets up and he began, he said, Father, can I come? Bid me to come. Now, wasn't there other people on the boat? But Peter was the only one said, Lord, I'll come. Yes. You see, there are many people who can do what you do. But everybody's not going to get up and do it. Oh, y'all 